Ethiopia, part three, tribes of the Omo Valley. We are on our way to the Omo Valley in southern Ethiopia, renowned for its tribes. And we are being greeted by the Bana boys, famous for walking on stilts surrounding our bus to get some beer. After reaching Jinka, we meet Danny, our couch surfing host with whom we are staying for two nights. He lives with his family in a big compound with many kids that are at the beginning very shy with us. But pretty soon, we become friends through games and hairstyles. The next morning, we wake up early and in spite of the rain, we are determined to visit the Mercy tribe as we already made arrangements for the car and Danny is coming with us as our guide and interpret. <laughs> Shopping? So we bought some soap and some razors for the Mursi. <laughs> We're coming in peace. <laughs> the Mursi village is deep in the Mago National Park, a 90 minute drive through the forest. We are stopped on the way by the zebra boys, and so we dance. Before arriving to the village, we are obliged to stop and pick up a bodyguard who is going to accompany us. It felt totally unnecessary, but there was no way around it. We hand over the razors and soaps to the chief, who is in charge of distributing them, but seeing the excitement over our small gifts made us realize that we should have brought much more. Since we arrived in the morning, we are invited to one of their huts for breakfast. Popcorn with spicy coffee. Paul gets a face painting similar in style to the lip plates that the women wear, one of the most distinguishable traits of the tribe. We are amazed with their scars all over their body and one of the girls showed us how she puts her lip plate on. They usually don't wear it all the time, it's just for a special occasion. However, this tradition is slowly dying out because the girls now get to choose and many of them opt just for the ear plates. On the other hand, these lip plates are the main tourist attraction and the village earns money from these visits. We spent around two hours with the tribe and most of it was dedicated to playing with the local kids. They were so pure and eager to interact with us and the language wasn't a barrier. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on there? We have a sliding action. <laughs> the day is not over yet and Danny is taking us for a hike near Jinka in the afternoon. On the way, we pass local school and we have a celebrity moment. <laughs> we feel a bit out of shape, so this four hour hike is quite a challenge for us, but the local Ari people living on the top of the hill make this journey up and down every day on their commute to town. So right now we're at the top of the mountain next to Jinka and this is a retreat spot. So people come, they meditate, they pray, they sing. And this guy for example he just spent he is gonna spend three days here and he's sleeping in the nature, he has his food, just reflecting, asking God a bit of wisdom and the way down seems much faster and we go through a gorgeous forest full of old gigantic trees. Have you ever seen such a big tree? This is like definitely the biggest I ever seen. Look at this. For dinner we treat ourselves to delicious boiled potatoes, one of the tastiest street foods we had in Ethiopia. 
So we are in Dimeka, it's a small town on the way to Tourmi, in the heart of the Homo Valley. And today is market day, so uh, there's many people from different tribes, so it's super exciting. From Dimeka, we continue to Tourmi, where Paul immediately befriended Oita, young local guide who rented us his motorbike for a day. We are so excited to have the freedom of roaming around on our own, and we are headed to a Karo village an hour and a half away. The road is in excellent condition until the point where we have to turn to the bush. From there, it was about 30 minutes of slow and painful driving through the wet sand. On the way, we are shocked upon meeting a young boy herding his cattle and protecting it with a rifle. How are you? We are going to the Karo village. Karo? Yes? yes? This way. This way? Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> See you! This village has a stunning view on the Omo River and we are greeted by the Karo women, covered only in the skirts, made out of goat skins and so many beads necklaces. Women with children gather at this viewpoint, working on their crafts and we are once again having the most fun playing with the youngest members of the tribe. <laughs> The men are sitting apart, their bodies covered in their traditional white chalk paints, featuring designs that change daily. But we also spotted some signs of the modern world, for example this pool table, attracting all the young men. In the afternoon, we are heading back to Turmi. So right now we're going to a boat jumping ceremony. It's a very famous uh, thing to witness with the Arar tribe and the Karo as well, they do it. And so apparently, uh, down by the river, we're going to see some boys go into adulthood, jumping over boats. Let's see. The family of the young boy is walking all the way from their village. And we join them at the end by the river. Preceding the actual bull jumping, the female members of the family are whipped by a few designated men. It's quite brutal to watch this tradition unfold in front of our eyes, although we come to understand that the women are volunteering and even fighting to be beaten. It lasts an entire afternoon, interrupted with dancing and singing. Do you know what happened? She got sad because she wanted to be whipped more and she's too old so she cannot. The women are proud of showing their scars as a sign of strength and fearlessness. It's finally time to march towards the grounds where the young boy will turn a man. The cattle is organized and a dozen of men are tasked with aligning the animals into a perfect line. In 30 seconds or so, the boy jumps four times over the bulls and brings the ceremony to an end. We're crossing back the river and prepare to say goodbye to the Omo Valley and to Ethiopia. With some African massage. <laughs> <laughs> so let me show you around the immigration office to exit Ethiopia in Moyale. Yeah, as you see, it's quite quiet. Are we very early in the morning? Very late at night? No. 12 o'clock, but everyone on a lunch break for two hours. We didn't have this information at all. And we actually wanted to take a bus at two, at two from, uh, from the other side to get back to Nairobi. So no, we're stuck here to get our exit stamp and uh, hopefully they come back after lunch in two hours. 
and then we exchange all our money. So we're stuck at the terminal waiting with no one. Our adventure continues to Kenya and much further as we are headed all the way to South Africa. If you want to follow all our travels, consider subscribing and checking out our Instagram where we share some pictures and stories of our backpacking journey. Bye bye! See you soon! Officer, can you please, please step me out? No, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> You're so evil. <laughs> I just want to go to Kenya. <laughs>